As the world watched the Chinese PLA fire missiles over Taiwan for a military exercise, people grew nervous that a war in the Taiwan Strait is imminent. But if we observe carefully, we'd notice that the CCP's use of military drills to threaten Taiwan has been inconsistent and self-contradictory. It seems that there are multiple forces influencing Xi Jinping's decision over Taiwan. Let's hear what Chinese political experts say about Xi's dilemma, miscalculations, and possible actions. Hi, welcome everyone. I'm Lei. Welcome to my show. On August 2nd, when Nancy Pelosi's plane landed in Taiwan, the People's Liberation Army announced that it would conduct a real fire military exercise from the 4th to the 7th. On the 4th, the drill started as planned, but within three hours, the PLA announced that the firing was over and that the relevant sea and airspace controls have been lifted. Then the regime announced that the military exercises were extended, not once but twice. And on August 9th, CNBC reported that China was extending military drills for an unspecified period. Yet the very next day, on August the 10th, the CCP declared that the military exercise over Taiwan has concluded. These back-and-forth announcements indicate precisely the CCP's internal power struggles and Xi Jinping's dilemma. After news of Pelosi's visit broke out, both Xi and the CCP reacted with strong, intimidating words. The online nationalist youth even called for the downing of Pelosi's plane. Then the state-controlled media went very quiet for a few days. According to a China expert based in Australia, Yuan Hongbin, the CCP miscalculated the United States. Based on his sources in Beijing, who Yuan described as conscientious individuals within the party, he said that she was misled by his foreign affairs chief, Yang Jiechi. Here's what Yuan said in an interview on August the 9th. Chuan 美国就声明不会派军队进入乌克兰与俄罗斯作战因此呢，杨洁篪认为，只要发出足够强烈的军事行动的威胁，嗯，拜登就会全力来阻止佩洛西访问台湾。In the beginning, she didn't regard Pelosi's visit to Taiwan as a big deal, as he was tied up reprimanding the corrupt officials in the semiconductor industry and focusing on securing his third term in the fall. But this miscalculation of Pelosi's visit caught him off guard. And the timing is particularly bad since it coincides with Beidaihe meetings, which is already a tough place for Xi to be in. All the top-level party officials, past and present, meet here annually to informally fight for power. Since August the 1st, the CCP's seven Politburo Standing Committee members have disappeared from the public eye. It's assumed that they are at Beidaihe. We've talked about Xi's political enemy, the Jiang Zemin faction, wanting him to start the war with Taiwan and lose so they can take over. This faction will certainly challenge Xi any time he shows signs of weakness in confronting the Taiwanese and the Americans. And they may make use of the online nationalists or the little pinks to oppose him. But there is another group within the CCP that's also threatening to Xi, and this group does not want him to start a war. 
One of China's most famous dissidents who now lives in the U.S., Wei Jinsheng, describes Xi's situation. Xi Jinping, in the current situation, he needs to find a way up. That way, he needs to fight two people. One is the top level officials, the upper level officials. The upper level officials are most likely to fight to make a strong response. That way, he will bring China into a real situation to put the whole China into a hole. Those people will be able to see things clearly. But at the same time, he also needs to fight against the people's social and communist people. 这些那个小粉红什么的，呃，这些人呢，你要弄弄不好，你现在表现的，好像台阶下的不好的话，那这些人可能会起来反对习近平，对习近平也是不利的。所以习近平在选择的时候，呃，对国内政治上的选择呢，现在是一个两难的困境。On July 30th, Taiwan's Central News Agency reported that the director of the Swiss State Economic Affairs said in an interview with the Zurich newspaper that Switzerland would follow up on all punitive measures taken by the EU against the CCP in the event of an attack on Taiwan. This surely has sent shockwaves through Beijing as CCP leaders worry about their overseas assets. In early August 2019, Professor Jia Kang former director of Institute of Finance under China's Ministry of Finance, forwarded a message that was deleted after going viral in China. The Swiss bank announced that 100 Chinese have a combined deposit of 7.8 trillion renminbi, or about $1.1 trillion. WikiLeaks' 2013 China Confidential file revealed that senior Chinese officials have about 5,000 accounts in Swiss banks, Two-thirds of them belong to officials in the central government, from vice premiers, bank presidents, ministers to CCP Central Committee members. Think about it, these people do not want to lose their money due to a war over Taiwan. So the two forces within the CCP may have opposing views on the war over Taiwan, but both are against Xi Jinping. This is because Xi's anti-corruption campaign has struck down many officials, and those who currently have money in overseas accounts fear being hit one day. If both forces were to join hands, the pressure on Xi would be unsurmountable. In weighing his options, he may see a war as the way out. Mr. Wei brought up a good point, that is, military conflict will help Xi stay in power by postponing the party's big conference that decides his re-election. This has precedence. Mao Zedong used this tactic during the Cultural Revolution to dodge a power crisis. The CCP's 8th National Congress was held in 1956. It adopted a resolution that the Congress would be held every five years. But the regime waited 13 years before holding the next Congress in 1969. What happened during the 13 years? Mao's Great Leap Forward movement in 1957 resulted in the Great Famine that lasted three years. Mao faced internal criticism and his power was challenged. To divert attention and stay in control, he launched the Cultural Revolution in 1966, which delayed the party's National Congress until 1969. Professor Yao Yuanye at the University of St. Thomas in Houston explained why a war is not entirely impossible. I think the further conflict is not completely impossible. Because the current situation is like this. 其实当共产党已经把这一次跟美国以及跟台湾的一个冲突层次拉到这种这么高的一个程度的时候，事实上，呃，对于共产党来说，或对于习近平本人来说，他必须要有一个可以下的台阶。现在有一些专家预测说，呃，共军共机可能会飞进台湾的领空。那中国会去尝试这样的这样的一个行为吗？当你做了这个行为，那事实上也表示了这个台海战争就马上直接开打，而且中国能承受它之后的后果吗？所以现阶段来说了，它必须要找到一个可能小打小闹的一个机会，但是这个小打小闹的机会到底在哪里？我觉得，呃，可能共产党从上到下都在寻找这样的一个可能性吧。
The Chinese military has begun expanding and selecting young men for the PLA. It recently increased the age limit to 26 and prefers college grads and young men with a master's degree. Unemployment for young people is as high as 20% in China, so sending them to the military may be a solution for the regime. On August the 10th, Beijing released its first white paper on Taiwan during Xi Jinping's rule. The last two white papers on Taiwan were issued in 1993 and 2000. The white paper stated that Beijing will not commit to renouncing the use of force and removed text that described Taiwan's autonomy. Texts such as no troops or administrative personnel will be stationed in Taiwan and as long as Taiwan recognizes one China and does not seek independence, everything is negotiable was also removed. Whether or not the CCP will start a war with Taiwan would depend on Xi Jinping's political needs. At this point, it's hard to say one way or the other, but the possibility of war cannot be ruled out. That's all for today. Thank you. See you next time.